Hi, I'm Danielle from djcoolbear.co.uk and today I'm going to show you how to make a hexagon quilt. My quilt pattern will be based on hexagons, so for this you will need, for drafting your own hexagons, graph paper, a protractor, a ruler and a pencil, or some pre-printed hexagons. Fabric, tacking thread, a thimble, fabric scissors, embroidery scissors, needle and pins, and some sewing thread. So to draft your own hexagons, you will need a protractor as you will be angling sides and some graph paper. Unfortunately this is metric so it won't fit exactly but you can get it as close as possible. So I'm going to make a two inch hexagon. Two inch refers to the length of the sides. I then use my protractor for a point of 60 degrees. And so then on the opposite corner, it's a point of 120 degrees. You then want to use your ruler and make that line two inches and the same on the other side. And take your protractor again up onto the end point, 120 degrees on that side. degrees on that side and there's a hexagon. This is your basic building block but you can make a variety of different shapes. So we have a spider's web type hexagon block and a spinning star. I'll show you the finished ones of those. So we have some stars. As you can see the diamonds form the hexagon and the tumbling blocks, the small one with tumbling blocks, which is made up of diamonds as opposed to hexagons. So a hexagon quilt is made with English paper piecing. So for English paper piecing, you need the paper pieces. So I'll take the pre-printed um, hexagons and cut a couple of hexagons out. Make sure to keep to the lines, although English paper piecing can be quite forgiving if the line is slightly out. The next thing you want to do is choose the fabric that you want to use. I will have this purple one. Another option is that you can get pre-made templates for cutting out your fabric. So taking my scissors, I'm going to cut about a seam allowance of a quarter of an inch. Fold the edge over and you can either start with the knot on the bottom, what will be the bottom side or the top side. It's all personal preference. So this piece I've already started, it's been pinned together, right sides together, the points lined up. An important seam in hexagons, in paper piece hexagons, is the Y seam, which this is one of. So if I stitch to the end of this piece and open it out, you will see that there is a Y seam. So this is the Y. So yet again, you fold it over, pin it as its long pieces, matching the corners and the end. In smaller pieces you may not need pins as you can hold it together with your fingers. And continue stitching. No need to cut the thread unless of course it breaks. So finished piecing this block, 
and because I'm going to be joining it with a lot of others, it will start to get quite unmanageable if I leave the papers in. So to remove the papers, leave the ones around the edges, you still need the nice sharp edge and you want to remove the tacking stitches of the ones in the middle, so pin's perfect. And the knot off the back, so pull the knot out and pull the paper out. So to join onto a bigger piece, more hexagons together, I have this larger piece here and I'm going to join this hexagon onto here. Yet again, another Y seam. Continue whip stitching the seam and every other seam of your hexagons and until you get the size that you want. Hexagon quilts are great scrap busters if you've got just random scraps that you don't know what to do with. So that's how you make a quilt pattern.